Hello and welcome once again to Eve May's Poetry Corner. Today's story is called Anansi and Tiger. So, are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. Once upon a time, Tiger was a good looking fellow. He wore a three-piece suit and a hat. And when he walked down the road on his two muscular legs too, he used to spin his walking stick elegantly, using the motion to flirt with every pretty girl. There was only one guy who was more handsome and vainer than Tiger, and that was Brother Peacock. But Tiger was stronger than everybody, except, of course, for Brother Elephant and Brother Lion who were both stronger. And people are still trying to guess whether Brother Jaguar was weaker or stronger than Tiger. The only person who did not have any respect for Tiger was, of course, Anansi. But he didn't show this because he knew Tiger might hurt him. He and Tiger had fallen in love with the same girl. She was the prettiest girl in the district. Even brother Corny, who lived in his hole and was half blind, had fallen in love with this girl. Brother Puttle, also known as Al, who always flew around with his darkers on in broad daylight, was full of praises for her. These fellows were no competition for Anansi, but brother Tiger, hmm. So, Anansi lay down in his hammock, lit his pipe and racked his brain. The next morning, he waited until Tiger had gone to the gym to do his bodybuilding and then walked to Serena's yard. Yep, yeah, this was the name of the girl. Seeing his down self, Serena asked him pitifully, What na Nancy? Me never see you look so sad. Why, Anansi sighed, me simply not understand you. You not understand me? What wrong with me, Anansi? What wrong with you? Anansi cried. And because he was so excited, he got a lisp. Why you associate with Tiger, him of all people? Him was for me father all riding hoof. For your father all riding horse, cried Serena. Yes, man, Anansi nodded. The substitute for the jackass. Tiger is a good for nothing. Him who can't carry the two bunker them pan him back. The only thing him good at is boasting. Serena showed her disgust. You's absolutely right, Nancy shouted. Him is bad company for true. Anansi suppressed a smile and bade Serena goodbye. An hour later, Tiger approached Serena's yard. He had taken a shower, put on sweet-smelling lotion and aftershave. His moustache was combed. He was dressed in his Sunday best with hat and gaily spinning his cane. Serena watched him from head to toe in disgust and turned away. Brother Tiger was totally confused now. What wrong with your beautiful, he said. Serena took a short, arrogant look at him. Excuse me, sir, she said after a short while. Me no socialize with no farmer riding pack animal. Pack animal? Me? Tiger exclaimed. Few pack animal. You suppose we know that better than me, Serena replied. Anansi Poopa Farmer Substitute for the Pack Mule. Anansi Poopa, a who did tell you? Finally, Anansi, tell me the truth about you, Serena coolly said. And me is very grateful for that. Anansi is a damn liar, Brother Tiger shouted. Serena watched him scornfully. And me going prove it, Tiger roared. Me going kill him. But before that, me going drag him right here so and him have to take back that blasted slander. Just do what you have to do, sir, Serena spat back. 
them animal them not have no manners and the best proof of that are the way you just shout on me so on me veranda no sir me no want have no dealings with you again trembling with rage tiger ran to anansi's house but anansi was well prepared he was lying on his bed a wet piece of cloth on his forehead he was covered with two thick sheets and he moaned and groaned and sighed. Tiger did not care at all. You have to get up right now, Anansi, he shouted. You have to come with me to Serena Yard and you have to take back that nasty lie you tell from me. Joke. I joke me did I make, Anansi whispered, wiping sweat from his face. Joke. At that you are called joke, Tiger Road. The most nasty lie you tell pa me. No, sir. You have to pay for that. Do I feel like brother Tiger and Nancy moaned. Me going dead right now. And me can't get up at all. Me not give a damn whether you're sick or half dead, Tiger shouted. You have to come with me. Even if me have to carry you to Serena Yard. All right, brother Tiger and Nancy sighed. That are the only way me can reach this. Thus, Tiger turned his back toward Nancy's bed and Nancy tried to climb onto T Tiger's back. He tried it once. He tried it twice. He tried it four times, but always slid down again. Me I got dead, he moaned. Chum on, Tiger hiss. You have to hold on firm, pa me neck, on my shoulder. Me can't do that, brother Tiger. Me just two weeks, sir. If you want to see me have to read Serena Yard, to rectify the little joke, you have to drop down upon your two hand them and walk four-legged. Me go and put a blanket upon your back and tap it the knife, Anansi Tiger said, and did what Anansi asked him to do. Anansi put a blanket on Tiger's back, climbed on it, and slid down deliberately. No, brother Tiger, not no go so, Anansi whispered. Me's half dead already, and me's too weak for whole arm strong on your wide back. Only two things me need. You are driving me crazy, Tiger Road. Me going to kill you. But then, me can't take back the little joke me make, Tiger. It's just two things me need. Me know, me know, me know, Tiger shouted. Do what you want to do. As long as you come with me to Serena and take back your nasty damn lie. And Nancy was grinning now. But Tiger could not see this as he was on his hands and feet and was looking forward. Me go and put something by you. The doctor used to be called Bridal, Brother Tiger. And then a pair of stirrup they put me weak foot them in. For God's sake, Anansi, Tiger said, blind with rage. Put that, the idol, pan me, and the blasted syrup. But come, the whole world have to hear said Tiger is not a damn pack, pack mule. Moaning and groaning, on, Anansi put a saddle on Tiger back, put the bridle and his feet into the stirrups, and he jumped onto Tiger's back. Very, very slowly and carefully, Tiger now started to walk four-legged. As soon as he had reached the threshold, Anansi grabbed the whip he had hidden on the door frame, pressed his knees and feet against Tiger's sides, thus forcing him to run. And boy, did Tiger run. Reaching Serena's yard, Anansi cracked the whip and shouted, See, Serena, me bring the living proof that Tiger are nothing but a stupid riding horse. And cracking his whip and shouting, Gee hoo! He rode around Serena's yard. Reaching the veranda, he jumped back from Tiger's back, bowed elegantly, and smiled. Serena, and all her neighbors now witnessed how Tiger was feeling shame, feeling shame, 
feeling shame. And as fast as lightning, Tiger took to his heels feeling shame with rage. From that day until today, tigers walk on their four feet, living in the jungle and not with people again. Is Anansi Mekin. Jack Mandora, me not choose none. Hope you enjoyed that. See you next week. Bye.